Hi everyone, my name's Chris. I'm an aerothermal engineer with experience in simulation and uh, modeling of complex structures. I'm also an FPV pilot and uh, RC hobbyist, and I've been flying FPV drones for about three years. And in that time, I've learned a lot from the whole community about filters, about PID tuning, about how our quads fly at a really fundamental level. And when I've combined that knowledge that I've gained with the knowledge that I have uh, from my career, I realized that frame resonance in mini quads is a really important issue that no one in the FPV community is talking about. And so I want to start that conversation today. So what do I mean when I talk about resonance? Frame resonance is when, uh, as the quad is flying through the sky, the motors are spinning, they're generating vibrations. Now, some at certain frequencies, those vibrations will excite uh, movements in the frame. And in the same way that, uh, you know, if you have a spring and a, with a mass on the end and you shake it at a certain frequency, you can get really big oscillations. And those oscillations, in our quads at least, are invisible to the eye, but can really, really significantly impact how a quadcopter flies. So in order to start this conversation, I want to do a few things with you today. I want to look at a traditional quadcopter frame. I've done some simulation of one, the TBS source one, and I want to analyze the resonances of that frame. And then I want to compare it to a frame that's been designed specifically with resonance in mind. So um, I hope you're ready to deep dive a little bit on some technical stuff. So let's get into it. So if you see here on my screen, I've got a, uh, a graph of the, the resonance performance of uh, two designs. The first is the TBS Source 1 V4, and the second is this uh, AOS 5, which is the frame that I'm working on at the moment. And what we can see initially is that the resonance uh, frequencies are picked out here as dots. So I'll make this a little bigger. And each of these dots represents a resonant frequency in a resonant mode. The first thing we'll notice is that the TBS Source 1 has quite a large number of resonant modes and the, the frequencies that these occur at go anywhere from about 100 hertz all the way up to 1000 hertz. So what makes resonant frequencies good or, or bad is um, really three main things. The frequency they occur at, the amplitude of the, of the resonance and the mode shape. And I think the easiest way for me to explain the effect of these three main factors is to show you um, some results, some simulations, and talk about mode shapes. So we're going to start by looking at this TBS Source 1. And we're going to start by looking specifically at the resonance at 100 hertz. So if I open um, a video of this resonance at 100 hertz. You can see here's our TBS source one. We've got the, the motors and the frame there, the battery on top. And you can see the, the resonance that's occurring. So uh, the motors are moving up and down and the arms are bending. So the next question we have to ask ourselves is, is this a good resonance or a bad resonance? And that all comes down to how this resonance affects the flight controller. Because the flight controller and its gyro is what's really detecting the movement of the quad and resonance that's occurring in the quad will be picked up by the flight controller and that will lead to um, noise in the gyro readings which then needs to be filtered out and in the worst case it's going to lead to hot motors and smoked motors and all kinds of you know horrible um, occurrences that I'm sure anyone who's been in the hobby for a while has has fought with. If we now look at uh, another resonant mode, so same frame, this is uh, the second uh, resonant mode of this frame. And we can see here that, you know, we've got the um, motors bouncing up and down, but the flight controller isn't really rotating inside the quad. 
So that means that the gyro, which is res responding to rotations, isn't really going to um, be particularly sensitive to this kind of resonant mode. And so maybe we don't need to worry so much about it. I forgot to mention right here that although it might not affect the gyro, you are still going to see that vibration in your high def footage from your uh, GoPro or your Insta360. Let's have a look at this resonant mode. This is the third resonant mode of the TBS Source 1. And you can see that here we do have a problem because the flight controller is pitching back and forth as, as the quad vibrates in the air. And so you're going to see this in your pitch, um, your pitch channel of your gyro. And you're going to need to filter that out. Otherwise, you're going to get hot motors, you're going to get smoked motors. And that's that's not good. We don't want to add filtering because adding filtering adds delay and it makes our quads fly worse. So we want to try to have as little filtering as possible. And if we've got resonant modes like this, we won't be able to reduce the filtering as much as we would like to. If we look now at the fourth resonant mode, we see this time that it's really coupled into, into um, roll, sorry. So the, the flight controller is rolling side to side, you can see, as the quad is vibrating in the air. And so that means we're going to need to add um, a lot more filtering on our roll axis in order to remove the, the noise caused by this resonant mode on roll. And if we keep going, um, we, can, we can see more and more resonant modes. This isn't particularly bad, as you can see, flight controller is remaining relatively still. This one, a little bit of coupling on uh, the roll axis. Here, you know, the, here the flight controller is moving back and forward. There is not too much to be seen. Uh, it's not a particularly bad mode. This one's a particularly nasty mode, uh, this time on the yaw axis. So as the, as the motors rotate on the end of the arms, as the quad vibrates in the air, the, uh, the gyro will be picking up noise on the, roll, on the uh, yaw axis here. And as it's picking up noise on that yaw axis, that noise is going to, to lead to needing more filtering um, or risking hot motors or smoked motors. Here's a, an interesting mode that just seems to involve mainly one, one arm. Um, obviously, there'll be symmetric modes for the other, the other three arms. Here's a mode involving a rotation of just two arms. These, these are interesting and I'm not dwelling on them really because they're not super relevant to the performance of this particular frame. Again, another interesting mode with, with three of the motors rotating and one staying relatively still, but it's not strongly coupled into roll, pitch or yaw on the flight controller. So again, it's probably not too bad for flight performance. Here we have another yaw mode, which we should be concerned about. So you can see here the flight controller is twisting back and forward. The gyro is going to be picking that up and it's going to, going to create hot motors, going to create smoked motors if you don't filter that out. We're getting up to the higher frequencies now, and these are in general less concerning for, um, for the performance of our quadcopters. When you're up at 900 hertz, you've got um, your low pass filters are, are really effective. The gyro has a built in low pass filter at about 250 hertz. You might also have a low pass filter on it in, uh, in beta flight, and you'll have filters on the D term as well that are, that are low pass. So, all of that will be attenuating these higher frequencies. Another, another interesting mode, this one again, not probably too critical for flight performance, but it's interesting to see um, how we have the motors rotating in and out and the quad moving up and down. And this is the final mode that I want to show you for the TBS Source 1. This is, uh, again, it's coupled into, um, coupled into pitch, but does it affect flight performance? Really up at 960 hertz, we're, we're probably well attenuated by whatever filtering we, we have on the quad, so it's not, not too much of a concern. So if we go back to my summary um, spreadsheet here and ask what does this mean for us, here's the TBS source one here. I've labelled um, the resonant modes that are concerning. So we've got uh, a bad mode for pitch, a bad mode for, for roll and yaw, and they're all labelled here with, with red lines. So you can see we have quite a few dangerous modes. 
And even the modes that, that are OK, we have to consider carefully the frequency of them. Low frequencies are really bad news because they're not well filtered by, um, by any of the filtering that we put on the gyro. So these, these frequencies at 104 and 125 hertz, even though they're not necessarily bad in terms of mode shape, I would still be really concerned about them just because of how close to the, the flight frequencies, um, the frequencies of prop wash and things of that nature, how close they are to those frequencies. And really, this, once you get to sort of uh, 104 to 185 hertz, these are really the ones that I would be worried about for this frame. So we've talked a bit about the TBS Source 1, and um, I want to show you a frame that I've been working on, design that I've been working on, that hopes to try and address some of these issues. So if we come over here and look at uh, my frame design that I've been working on, and that some of you who've been uh, watching the FPV sub on Reddit might have seen, we have a very different story when it comes to resonance. Firstly, I'd like to call attention to the fact that the first resonant mode here isn't at 104 hertz like it is with the Source 1. It's much higher frequency. In fact, it's nearly double the frequency of the, of the, the mode of the Source 1. And that means that whatever filtering you've got, low-pass uh, filters on the D-term, for example, are going to be much more effective at filtering these higher frequencies out than the lower frequencies that you see with the Source 1. Hi, Chris from the future here again. I just want to call attention to the fact that even though these low frequency modes might not couple into the gyro strongly, they are going to cause jello and loss of smoothness in HD footage. Again, the first two modes, as with the Source 1, are, are not bad mode shapes. and I'll show the mode shapes to you in a second. But the frequency is much higher, and that means that the flight performance of this frame from a resonance standpoint should be much, much better. The next two modes are, again, these are bad mode shapes. Similar to the Source 1, the next two modes are bad pitch and bad roll mode shapes. Um, but compared to the Source 1, again, we're looking at twice the resonant frequency, which means that the filters are just going to be working so much better at attenuating. And then, really, all the way up to a kilohertz, we don't have any more particularly bad mode shapes. Compared to the Source 1, where we have, you know, four additional concerning mode shapes, there's really um, nothing particularly concerning to see here. So let's dig into the mode shapes now for, for this new frame design. Here's the first mode shape at 179 hertz. So as I said before, it's twice the frequency nearly of the, of the Source 1. And it's not a bad mode shape. You can see the flight controller, which is in the front in this design, is, is really staying very still. We've got the motors moving up and down, but if the flight controller is remaining still, the gyro isn't going to be picking up that noise. If we look at the second mode, we have this uh, bouncing mode, really similar to what we saw with the Source 1, where the motors bounce up and down and the, and the uh, body of the quad moves in the other direction. But again, notice that we're not seeing any rotation of the flight controller on pitch, roll, or yaw. It's just moving up and down. And what that means is that the gyro isn't really going to be very sensitive to this mode shape. So you're not going to see too much noise. You're not going to need to apply a lot of filtering. Another benefit is because the frequency here is twice that of a similar mode on the Source 1, you're going to see a lot less effect on HD footage. Here's the first bad mode shape of this design. Now again, it's a bad mode shape, but it is at a much higher frequency than we saw with the Source 1. It's twice the frequency. It's a pitch mode again, so you can see the flight controller pitching forward and back as the quad vibrates in the air. Much the same as the Source 1 really in this case, but you're really going to see a benefit from that higher frequency with this design. Filters are going to work better, your motors are going to stay cooler, um, less chance of smoking a motor. You, if you're an aggressive pilot, you'll be able to turn your filtering down to get a faster response, quicker reaction to your stick inputs, um, and a really a tighter, tauter um, feel for the quad. And also with less resonance, the flight should feel smoother as well. You'll see less jello in your camera. Um, your video will be will be less blurry. You know, there's a really a lot of benefits from from improving the resonant performance of the frame. So let's look at the second bad mode. Again, this is really similar to the Source 1 um, in terms of the mode shape. 
you've got uh, motors moving um, left and right and the body of the quad moving in the opposite direction. But again, at twice the frequency, filtering's better. Um, you're going to have cooler motors. You're going to see less jello in your camera at the higher frequency as well. Remember that the, it's the lower frequency, the, the closer the frequency is um, of the vibration is to the frame rate of your camera, the more noticeable it's going to be. So you might really notice that 104 hertz vibration on the, uh, on the Source 1, for example, in your camera. But up at these higher frequencies, you know, double the frequency, it's going to more than halve the, the jello that you see in your camera. And as we go and look through the rest of these modes, you know, really they're just pretty to look at, aren't they? Um, but there's not much here that's going to reflect, affect flight performance. The flight controller is remaining pretty still. So we'll zip up. You um, can see a mode here where you've got the, the tail of the quad moving around. Um, but, you know, flight controllers are remaining pretty still. So another interesting mode, you know, you've got the, the motors moving on the front arms and the, and the rear arms, less so. Um, but again, flight control is staying pretty still. And this final mode up at 890 hertz is really the first mode where we start to see anything that might um, be coming in on the yaw axis at all. Um, but it's much less of a problem up at these frequencies. I mean, there's the low pass filters on the gyro are going to be so effective up at you know nearly 900 hertz that even this even this vibration is probably not going to affect your flight performance. Uh, it's probably not going to cause much jello in in your camera. It's probably not something that you need to worry about. All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope that the information in it is making you think about frame design and frame resonance in a new way. I'm going to be doing some more content on this in the future, so if you don't want to miss it, you know what to do. I'm also keen to get your comments and questions, so please um, put them below and I'll try and answer as many as I can. In the meantime, happy flying.